Im Sommer war ich zusammen mit meiner Frau vier Wochen lang auf Roadtrip durch Skandinavien. Norwegen und Schweden waren unsere Hauptreiseziele. Die Reise hatte ich so geplant, dass ich auf dem Rückweg durch Schweden von Nord nach Süd bei einigen Messerfirmen Stationen mache. Also habe ich mich im Vorfeld mit diesen Firmen in Verbindung gesetzt. Wie so immer im Leben klappt aber alles nicht immer, wie man es gerne möchte. Und so haben wir die Werksferien bei Karasuando einen Strich durch die Rechnung gemacht. Ja, und als ich bei Felkniven vor der Tür stand, war leider Mitsommerfest und dort haben die ja, Mitarbeiter wohl schön gefeiert. Das hoffe ich zumindest. Zwei Firmen konnte ich aber dennoch besuchen. Das eine ist Kastrum und das andere ist Mora. Heute in der ersten Folge geht es also nach Lüxele zur kleinen Firma Kastrum. Der Gründer und Inhaber David Cassini Beckström hat mich so ein bisschen rumgeführt durch die Zentrale, hat mir gezeigt, wie die Prozesse bei denen so ablaufen. Ja, für euch gibt es daher heute hier ein paar kleine Einblicke. Ja, ein Messer habe ich mir natürlich dort auch gekauft. Was das ist, erfahrt ihr am Ende des Videos. Ich wünsche euch viel Spaß dabei. Film ab! Also, ich bin jetzt hier im Showroom von Kastrum und hier ist David Cassini. Ja, ja. Cassini ähm, Backstrom. Cassini Backstrom, ja, er ist der Founder, er ist der Gründer von Kastrum. David gibt uns eine kleine Tour. Okay, let's go. Okay, ja. Yeah. Ja, yeah, so uh, this is where we have some, uh, some of the products that we are uh, selling. This is our small showroom here. And um, yeah, we have uh, all the different models. And, What is uh, the first model that you started with? So we started with the number 10 knife actually and it is pretty much exactly 10 years ago that we that we did the first version of the number 10 knife yeah so uh yeah and this is a uh, it's changed a little bit in in shape and this is a few small modifications but essentially that's the, the same model as, and as different as handle types of course yes we have different handle types and different grinds and different steels on that one yeah. so Yeah. So what steels are you using? So we're using a uh, Sleipner from Oderholm, which yeah. is a um, an uh, eight percentage chromium steel. So it's somewhere in between a carbon steel and a stainless. And um, yeah, very good alloy tool steel that uh, is tough and holds an edge really, really well. We also use Sandvik or Alema, which is called now 14C. 28N and it is a fully stainless steel that is um, yeah very tough and um, works really well for for outdoor knives um, so yeah we use that as well and we have the Scandinavian grind and a few of the models we also have the uh, the full flat grind ah, full flat it's auto the number 10 yeah yeah okay so different handles right. and different yeah grinding types and exactly. steel yeah and then you have the different sheaths so we have different. Uh, um, different sheaths with or without fire steel and now also we have the kydex version and this is also something that you can use for combination of uh, different It's, knives together this is the number 10 together with the with the safari safari, the safari mini hunter this is this yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, safari, genau. Eine schöne kombination großes messer für die groben arbeiten und ein kleines für die feinen We also do some of the accessories like the Lapland leather wax, which is great for putting on the uh, leather products like yeah. uh, knife sheaths. It's really for stiff leather, so holsters yeah. and sheaths, the sharpening products. We do some kits, leather belt, oh, yeah. various leather accessories. Find your head here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then the, we obviously have all the books. Yeah, the so book. this is the books that we. Uh, And the books are, are written by Lars Felt, and um, all the Swedish ones they are published uh, by a Swedish publisher. But uh, we collaborated with this publisher and uh, did the translations to English mm. for uh, Lars books and published them in uh, in English. So we have a publishing company, okay, also, yeah. Castrum Publishing. Uh, just so this is a uh, knife making kit. Correct. What uh, can, can you show me one that is not assembled? Yes, yeah, yes. absolutely. Piece of leather and um, the blade. 
which is a, just a simple poco blade. Yeah, finished poco blade. A little bit of reindeer antler, thread, bolster, and uh, the curly birch piece. So you have to completely just need to buy some glue. Yep. And have some drills ready. Correct. And yeah, yep. and some sewing needles. Yep. And then I can build my own knife out of it. Exactly. And this is one yeah. example. Of and so okay. sollte es dann vielleicht aussehen, wenn man <laughs> gut ist. Yeah. What, what's the price of this of this kit? Uh, I think it was around 40 euros. Okay. But, uh, they all come with that round there, 40 to 50 euros. That's, like that's, that. that's very, very reasonable, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, but it's it's good practice also for uh, yeah. Um, yeah, if you want to, you know, train a little bit of knife making. This kind of knife is actually more difficult to make by hand than a full time knife. We also sell yeah. the blades for the full time knives. Yeah. Um, but essentially, there isn't a lot of um, there isn't that much that you can do with uh, with the combinations. You can obviously change and decide which scales you want. But mm. with this kind of knife, you can you can vary your shape of the handle a yeah. lot more to suit your yeah, individual sure. needs. Mm. So it can be quite uh, quite fun. Cool. Yeah, you can also decide where where, where you want to have this uh, piece of antler. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Dann schauen wir mal in die andere Vitrine rein. Was haben wir da noch? Ja, yeah. yeah, so this is where we have the, the large felt series. Okay. So the large uh, open it. tang knife. And um, yeah, so this is um, one of our best selling knives, really. The large felt knife. So he designed it completely? Yeah, we, we, we collaborated on it, yeah. basically. But uh, it's essentially, um, it's been steered by Lars Felt all throughout the design process and it's uh, based on his preferences so uh, yeah and that is the, the Woodsman knife which is uh, a collaboration with Roger Harrington from England okay he's also a survival trainer or... yeah. yeah yeah he's a bushcraft survival yeah. instructor yeah uh, yes. uh, some dangler systems yeah yeah I think you were the first one that came up with these kinds of yeah. carabiners. Yeah. This these rectangular ones. Yeah. Quite awesome to for for the dangler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, we see we see a few a, a few sort of imitations or copies now, but uh, uh, none of them I've found are particularly good. <laughs> so I think uh, I think ours is still the original and and, and best on the market. So uh, but yeah, I um. You mentioned that also. That is the uh, one award that we won at Blade Show in 2019 for uh, knife collaboration of the year. This that is for the lockback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lock back. lockback. Cool. We also uh, we don't have so much now, but I can show you over here. We have we have some seconds that we factory seconds. So if anybody comes here, you know there is the opportunity to. Uh, uh, to buy factory seconds, so okay. like a thirty percent and sometimes fifty percent discount. Okay. Uh, so uh, that can be knives that, for some reason, have some kind of uh, small cosmetic error. That can be maybe, uh, maybe there is a small, you know, like okay. damage to the wood or yeah. something like this. But usually, they are in in very good condition. So. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is something that uh, something that usually happens when you use the knife for for time. Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, for for a lot of people, I think uh, you know, if you're going to be using and abusing your knife, you know, um, buying a factory second can be a good way to get a uh, um, to get a good good quality knife for for less, really. So yeah, and we put some on the website as well, so it's possible. To also, auf jeden Fall noch ein Grund hierher zu fahren, denn da gibt's besser mit Rabatten zu kaufen. Super. Mm. Yeah, we have some materials also for knife making. We used to do quite a lot of this, but uh, that's something that we have scaled down. Just, a lot. Um, oh, some carving knives, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is a, a series of carving knives that we did a while, uh, and uh, we had the. Yeah, um, I did not know that that you are also producing carving knives. Um, mm. I just know it from from the I think it's Mora, yeah. They yeah. have a series. Yeah. So, so basically, we, we did these for a number of years, and, and uh, the problem was that the factory um, that we worked with in Mora yeah. uh, was um, it, it was an old factory. I mean, Mora had lots of factories back in the day, and up until recently, there were only two left. There was 
more of Sweden, the big one, big industry. And then there was a small workshop with two guys, old guys who were um, basically called Bröderna Jönsson, or the Jönsson brothers. Mm -hmm. And um, they were still doing this kind of traditional, uh, you know, um, knives. Uh, and uh, we collaborated with them on a few, a few of these products, uh, and just tried to make a slightly different uh, shape to the spoon carving knives, yeah. just to to uh, make something a little bit mm. more advanced and a little bit better. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, that factory burnt down, so uh, Ooh. it uh, it burnt to the ground, and and uh, yeah, those guys were old guys. You know, it was uh, one was ninety five, and the other was Ooh. sort of uh, seventy one or something yeah. like this. So they weren't gonna be starting up the business again unfortunately so these are the last ones then these are the last ones yeah, yeah okay absolutely yeah they're, they're just here to be to be bought at the at the um this box here uh, yeah this is our uh, our sort of swedish um uh, web shop warehouse and and where uh, theo is packing and, and dealing with web orders and, and things like that so we have a few a few um products that we sell also in the, in the Swedish market okay. as a distributor. So a whole like Holtiforce axes and uh, a few uh, cameras for uh, for um, game observation, you know, mm. like trail cams and things like that. Yeah. Yes, here we have uh, some books. So we have all the, the book uh, storage for uh, for the, the books that we deal with. So, uh, you know, the yeah. outdoors using a knife, using an axe winter book, summer book, and, and so on. And then we have lots of different products here, various uh, um, components for the uh, for the uh, kits, etc. Blades and things like that. So, yeah. Mm. Not as large as I expected it. Yeah, just a mm. just a mid mid sized company. Yeah. 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 It's, well, small really. Yes. It's a small company. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and uh, we have various uh, products that come in here, and we, we uh, I can can just show you quickly. We can we can go over here actually. Okay. This is where we have sort of the uh, uh, stock for uh, more international orders and things like that. Um, so uh, the knives usually come in from the factory, and then uh, I have one guy called Jimmy here. He's he's at the uh, coffee break now, but. Okay. Uh, he checks every knife uh, individually yeah. and uh, basically he puts comments on if there is anything that uh, needs amending. So there might be some kind of uh, some kind of adjustment that needs to be done to the knife just to get it perfect. Okay. And, um, and then uh, he sorts them into different qualities. He might pick up on a knife that is, you know, for some reason it's a factory second. It will be put to the side and sold cheaper. Otherwise we. We uh, we go over them and make sure that we put another extra touch to to each and every knife. So, so the production you said it's made in Spain. Spain. Uh, we have also in uh, um, the parts of the production is in Germany actually, and okay. then uh, uh, also in Italy we have quite a lot of production. As okay. Well. Yeah. So yeah, we work with these companies, and then the only other thing that we do, which is um, uh, made somewhere else, is really the. Um, uh, the carabiner we have um, a, a company that uh, we work with in okay in, um, in taiwan actually oh. we, um, so yeah but uh yeah that's uh that's how it works so it comes yeah. in so they come in these here. packagings and then you use you uh, put in right. the, your own well, packages we, exactly we, we we do the quality control here and then it carries on and it goes to the workshop and uh, in the workshop um, i have um, uh, Marcus, who sits here, and basically he takes the knives, and and uh, depending a little bit on uh, what is the situation with the with the knives, uh, he will go through them. These particular knives, uh, they're pretty much perfect, so they are uh, all that they are needed is another few coats of oil. Yeah. So uh, that is what he's doing with these this box, um, but otherwise there will be certain things like, for instance. We have some some knives here which are put in order that need um, another sharpening. So we do sharpening again yeah. on the knives just to perfect the edge. Uh, these are drying from uh, oiling. From oiling yeah. And then there can be other things that need uh, correcting, like uh, for instance we have here some that uh, have various things. I think these have been glued and they need to just be be sharpened again or be be um, you know. Uh, corrected in the handles. Yeah, okay. I can't quite see what these two 
that's the problem but but there is something here mm. and then we just uh this is a machine that we use for um perfecting the, the shape of the handle and doing the final finish cool um, and this is a machine that we use to uh, to polish the edge yeah, the polish yeah yeah so uh that is uh and and um yeah that that is the main things that are, are done in here um and then when the uh when the when all the knives have been sort of checked and and they're all ready we basically put them in on here and they they are here waiting to be um uh to be assembled with the the sheath and, uh, sheath and, the and packaging, packaging and, yeah and uh, this is the this is a sort of a metal workshop where i work a little bit with building prototypes and also do you know the sort of the grinding of, of prototypes and regrinding if knives need regrinding so um this is a heat treatment oven for yeah. doing prototypes and things like that and a small small milling machine some little antlers here yeah this is just trash so yeah. this is something <laughs> something you don't need to show sure. but yeah <laughs> yeah no so it's uh th that is uh, what it's like and also we uh we make some of this uh um <laughs> this is uh our this is our secret recipe of our uh, <laughs> of, of, of our uh, leather wax. But yeah, we make the leather wax in house. So oh, yeah. uh, we make that in this uh, in this kind of boiler. Yeah. So um, but yeah, it's uh, so we do a few things here, and then um, this is the storage for for wood. So we buy in all the wood and uh, store it and dry. So uh, 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 all of the colored birch wood is also graded, and we we have uh, various. Um, uh, this is it's, uh, not correct, but no. but yeah. So uh, we we do uh, we cut and and uh, we uh, we deal with wood uh, to make sure that we um, we also use the top quality wood. Really. Yeah. And uh, we make sure that we dry the wood for at least three months before it's used. So it's okay. uh, very. It's actually seasoned uh, with the uh, um, uh, with the wood handling company. So the the company who, who actually harvests the wood. Yeah. They cut it up in planks and then they uh, dry it, so season it, and then it's cut in smaller pieces and it's sent here and we and we sort it and then and then we dry it uh, for at least three months. Yep. So we have a big but it's, it's nothing stabilized it's just a plain wood and you just put the oil on it yeah uh, usually we that is most of the models that we yeah. do that too we we uh we dry them very carefully and then we use oil but some of the models we also send for stabilization so yeah. i will show you that as well and here we just uh, make some smaller pieces if we need to for different models we correct sizes and and so on so we have a little wood woodworking okay. shop as well cool um, yeah, and we used to do the, the stabilizing in house before, but we don't anymore because it's something that takes a little bit too much time, I feel. But um, yeah, I can show you here. So uh, we collaborate with uh, specialized companies who work with, uh, with stabilization. So we send we send off the blocks, and basically um, they come back stabilized. Like oh, yes. This. So this is this is what they look like the stabilized wood. This is stabilized bog oak, and then you have well, what is bog oak? It's uh, it's more ice. Ah, more ice. Ah, okay, yeah. This is the blue stabilized curly birch. Ah, cool. So that is what the block looks like before it's uh, split and then uh, milled into a uh, handle. Cool. This is a new product that's coming soon. Oh, so cool! Yeah, curly birch uh, kuxa. Curly birch. What would be the price of this one, you know? Oh, probably around 60 euros, something like that. That's, that's easy. Yeah, so that's uh, that's basically that stuff. We also have, um, yeah, the the um, sharpening tools. This is the, the strops that we do. And with. with the strop, the paste? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. And we also buy in quite large quantities of, uh, of fire steel. So let's just show you. So this is uh, basically the fire steels that we yeah. use. Um, so uh, we buy them in, in, in large drums. Yeah. These, are, these are packaged already, but usually they come in, in drums with, with um, around a thousand pieces yeah. each. So yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that is uh, that is pretty much it, and we have 
we have some uh, some books here also like yeah. survival book etc so yeah very nice yeah gibt noch ein paar Sachen in einem Büro vom Chef zu sehen und zwar von den historischen Modellen von Castrum ja yeah. ja yeah, so uh, this is actually the first uh, version of the Lars Feld knife so this is the the original prototype that I made yeah. and um, but the Lars wasn't quite satisfied with the with the shape of it so we okay. changed it a little bit so yeah yeah but uh, I think this was the second prototype actually mm -hmm. and that was the original just to start uh, just to finalizing the, the model so yeah. this was actually done just in in wood with glue okay. just to, or wood with the uh, with clay so um yeah and um and we have some other some other pieces here that was the sheath this is the actual the original roger harrington knife the mm -hmm. woodsman so this is the yeah basically the original um woodsman uh, prototype from roger mm -hmm. So he made it and sent you over, or did yeah. you made it? Yeah, he made it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah he made it because he's also a knife maker. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah. He, he made this and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good, it's a good, nice piece. Um, I don't think I have the original. No, this is not the original Safari, but uh, yeah, there is uh, some other stuff here. Yeah. But uh, that, for instance, is an old uh, version of the uh, number 10, which was done with Bubinga wood. Oh, but, Bubinga, uh, yeah. um, I can't remember exactly. It might have been 2015, 2016, something. They updated the CITES uh, regulations and listings. And basically all the woods that were looking like uh, exotic woods like this, red or brown, they were kind of they were put on the CITES listing. And um, they weren't in danger, but because they're so difficult to distinguish from woods that are Indeed, uh, yeah. endangered then uh, they were put on the listing and for that reason we stopped dealing with this wood yeah. completely. That, so, that's okay i mean yeah. with uh, birch bark uh, with curly birch you have one of the most beautiful uh handle yeah. right in the area yeah and yeah yeah let's stay local that's 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 good that is one uh, very unique uh, model that was only produced in uh, maybe 50 pieces something okay. like that so if you have one like this then uh, it's very it's <laughs> very rare it is a uh, brown uh, stabilized curly birch okay so yeah so yeah and this is actually some of the products that uh, uh inspired uh, me to make uh, um other products so this yeah. is a original tool holder for the uh, Swedish military yeah and uh, we made a, a sort of a, an axe holder out of leather okay uh, which is inspired by this very nice and, uh, uh, hier seht ihr noch mal den uh, die stabilisierte Kalibert in dem Grünton wirklich wunderschön and this is actually some of the stuff that uh, was uh, predated the original uh, design of the uh, of the dangler yeah so, uh, I was first looking for something like this and eventually i found it and tried it and i felt now nah, a round one is not suitable it's, it doesn't work the way i want it so yeah this is where i realized there is nothing like this in the world so yeah. we, we we made it and i designed it and this was experimentation with the colors so mm -hmm. obviously these were didn't suit in my opinion so this is actually an interesting uh knife and this is something that uh, i designed for carzando actually okay many many years ago this was probably 15 years ago i i wanted them to make a uh, full tank knife and they made a couple of these samples but uh basically they they didn't want to carry on doing them so okay. uh, and that was kind of the first step towards uh, starting to design knives really because i was working a lot with carzando at that mm. time and the, the old owner kurt Bissonen. Uh, light colored handle yeah. and with RWL 34 steel. Oh, yeah. This was a steel they didn't use at all mm -hmm. back in those days. So, uh, but um, yeah, it was, uh, we called it the scop synth knife, but they've kind of called it something else. I can't quite remember what, what they called it. And the, the, the last one, this is. Yeah, this is uh, this is an old knife that was actually uh, this is... um, a design collaboration, or th this was actually designed and made by a guy called Kimo Sorovia. I don't think he makes knives anymore, but he was making 
you know, small scale production of knives and, and really nice knives. So this is kind of part of the Castrum history. We, I was selling quite a lot of these in the beginning. It's probably, how long ago is it now? It's not 20 years, but uh, let's say 20, 2005, 2006, yeah. 2007, I was selling these on eBay in England. Mm. And uh, yeah, they were doing really well, but these were, I mean, they had a really good price. I think that the price was something like 50 or 60 euros for, for a knife like this. And this is uh, one, no, it's, it's glued together, yeah. It's glued together, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but still, the work. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, awesome. Superb, so, yeah. Yeah, so I have a lot, a lot of uh, sheath like this in the museum, and yeah. uh, fantastic. You can hear also. Yeah, this clack yeah. has. <laughs> but unfortunately, I think he was making the knives a little bit the cost was too low and and yeah he decided to stop uh, making knives okay because he was working extremely hard but uh, yeah i like i love those knives i really i really felt that they were superb so yeah they're cool yeah this is uh, actually we made i don't know if you've seen that it's yeah, seen that we the made. Town, yeah this is the saw that we have now but this was actually the first version this was the first prototype mm -hmm. and uh, I sort of moved away from it because I thought it was a little bit too advanced the, the shapes. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but uh, it's it's but, but we it's just for like smaller branches really. Yeah, it's actually a hunting saw. It's Hunt for uh, it's, ah, it's, it's, it's a hunting saw. The breastbone and pelvic okay, yeah. bone of uh, of small deer. Okay, so, yeah, a hunting saw, not not another wood saw. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was the original version actually. Ah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And, um, this is uh, some of the ah. things that we have. Also. The Kalex yeah? Yeah, correct. So it means if you buy a knife, uh, uh, for example, if I buy uh, like this, this, this set, you just go and pick the pick the knife, then pick the sheath that yeah. I want, and uh, then yeah. package it all together on the fly. Correct. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Very cool. Yeah. David, thank you yeah, okay. for this nice little tour and yeah. mm -hmm. uh, look behind the uh, curtains. Yeah. For Custom Knives. Um, wie gesagt, schaut auf jeden Fall mal bei Custom auf der Webseite vorbei. Schöne kleine Firma, die man gerne unterstützen kann. Und ja, das war's mit dem ersten Teil dieser ja, Tour hinter die Kulissen der schwedischen Knife Manufacturers. Und ja, weiter geht's wahrscheinlich dann bei Mora im nächsten Teil. Ciao. So, hier dann nochmal in der Detailaufnahme das Lars Feld Lockback. Ein ja, wunderschönes Messer mit Griffen aus einem Maserholz, aus Maserholz Birke. Als Stahl kommt der Böhler N96 zum Einsatz. Ein Backlock ist vorhanden. Trotz dass das Teil nicht so leicht ist, hat es bei mir in letzter Zeit sehr viel Pocket Time bekommen. Ist ein wunderschönes Messer, Handschmeichler, ein tolles Erinnerungsstück an meinen Urlaub in Schweden. Ich danke dir fürs Zuschauen. Schalt auch nächste Woche wieder rein. Dann geht's zu Mora. Ciao.